I would like to speak to you about the Sufi meditation. And we are going to do it together. It is the dhyana meditation. The word dhyana, by the way, this part of Sufism belongs to the Indian line of Nakshibandi. Nakshibandi um, line of Sufis or yogis. Uh, there was a branch to immigrate it into India hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and they remained in India. So they acquired Indian expressions, like those who remained in Persia or in Arabia acquired either Persian expressions and practices or Arabic expressions and practices. So we, do the, we use the word karma, we use all the Hindu expressions. I do not speak Arabic, so I can't help you on that, but it's not important. It is the same. It's only on the level of speech. So this is the Indian branch of Nakshibandi. So we use the word dhyana, which is a Sanskrit word for this particular meditation. This word dhyana becomes chan in Chinese and zen in Buddhism. In, in, so, sorry, and zen in, in Japan, sorry, I'm confused. So you see, it is very similar to a Zen meditation, with a slight difference, but not important. The differences are not important. All the similarities are not important. It is a Sufi meditation. And the meditation is, I first have to explain it to you, a slightly esoteric part of it, and then we are going to do it. You see, it is a meditation of silence, of going within. It is to contact something within you which is immortal. That is, the part in you which is made in the image of God. Your soul, or Atma, to put again a Sanskrit word. Because we are eternal, immortal, and ancient, we are without beginning and we are without end. So we are trying to contact that in us by trying to contact the important part, the Im immortal part in us. All the mortal parts will be or will come on the surface. So if it is darkness in <coughs> you, eventually you will suddenly become aware of your soul. They will come up in meditation and you have to deal with it. So in a way, as the years go by, it is self-analysis. You don't need an analyst if you are confused or if something wrong with you. You become automatically healthy. As I speak, I will say to you other things too. So we are going deep within our being. And the procedure is as follows. Now, please, you're sitting in different positions. Make yourself completely relaxed in any position you sit. One can be relaxed with closed egg legs. One can be relaxed in a chair. You can, you can even lie down. Here is no room to lie down. But at home you can. And this meditation you can do at home. Just relax quietly. And I found, as the time went on, on, to close the eyes softly is helpful. Now, if you see something beautiful, you automatically, just watch yourself, close your eyes for a split second softly. How beautiful. You don't bang your eyes down like that. When you are angry, you do that. But when you are love, when you are in stillness, you just close your eyes softly. Relaxation is needed because the body will tell you if you are uncomfortable, if you are tense, and you cannot do what I'm trying to tell you. So just be completely relaxed. One can be relaxed in any position, quite relaxed. Once this lady lay down, that's fine. Okay. And you breathe quietly. 
your normal breath. Don't uh, take deeper breath as usual because that will disturb again what you're trying to do. Just normal. And you go, imagine you go within yourself. Where within? Within. In another dimension which is your heart chakra, the psychic center of your heart, not the physical heart. You go deep with it, within, and you see if you find there a place where there is stillness, where there is peace, where there is love. Every human being has this place that we are created in the image of God is not, not only a religious statement and the statement of every philosophy. It is a fact which you will experience yourself in, in the state of deep meditation. Thou art that, with capital T. So this place exists within your heart. So you try to go deeper, and if it is not deep enough, you say, I am going deeper. Is it there? And I am going still deeper. Is it there? Take your time. You won't do it immediately. Perhaps it will take days. Perhaps it will take weeks. But you will find this place. <coughs> Everybody has got it. And if, if you didn't find it, it means you didn't do it well enough, you should try harder. And once you are in this place, imagine you remain within this wonderful peace you have suddenly found, within this love. But you must feel love. It's no use to say with your mind, I am in the place of love. That's no good. You must feel the warm, rich feeling of love. And while you are trying to find this place, the mind, your thinking mind, will not give you trouble because the mind loves doing things. The mind loves to discover things. So the mind will, tr will help you to find this place. But once you are sitting there, or it's neither sitting nor lying, you are there. Your very being, including the physical body, relaxed, warm, in stillness, within the feeling of love and peace and stillness of God, the mind will begin to work because the mind gets bored. It will produce thoughts. Oh, I have forgotten to put on my kettle or to let out the cat. Or I have to buy some potatoes tomorrow. Or I mustn't forget to, to phone my husband or my wife. Now, this is not the moment to have these thoughts. You get hold of the thought and you merge it within the feeling of love, within the feeling of peace. And the thought must disappear, must dissolve, must drown within this feeling. Now, this is an exercise of willpower and also a spiritual exercise. It's both. It's exercise in willpower and a spiritual practice. The thought must disappear. If it doesn't, just push harder. Just fill your heart with so much love that no thoughts can, can survive. You see, love is one of the great virtues which you can cultivate. You cannot cultivate gratitude. You cannot say, I will be grat grateful. You're either grateful or you are not. You cannot cultivate joy. Either I am joyful or I am not. Joy comes by itself. When you reach a stage of evolution, when you are already a yogi, then your natural state is joy, and you are full of fun and of gladness. But love is one of those virtues, because it is your very being, and you are made in the image of God, whose very being is love. Love can be somehow recreated as a feeling within your heart. And if you, by any chance, cannot recreate love because you never loved in your life, they exist people like that, they are very rare, but they exist, then just think of peace, a peaceful state every human being can recreate in his heart. 
and all the thoughts one by one must be drowned and in front of you closed eyes there is just darkness stillness that is the famous jhana meditation in india it is called the mother of all powers very powerful meditation because the great power the cities come from it but once you begin to feel the great power in you then this power has to be surrendered but that is another matter for the moment we deal only with the meditation and we have exactly a quarter of an hour to do that until 12 o'clock so you are relaxed your eyes are closed softly because you love when you love there is this feeling of softness of tenderness you do not breathe too deeply because the breath itself will disturb you and you find the place within your heart and whatever comes into your mind you just merge into it and I will tell you when to end and I will end the meditation with a Sufi saying and then apparently we have a interval where we can have some food and I will have some food and then we meet again in the afternoon so with the help of the beloved in our heart we just remain still There are two ways how thou canst love me. Either I will be so perfect that thou hast to love me. Or I will surrender before thee and thou wilt love me for myself. Thank you, my friends.